Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide on the nation of Ternati for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. Now, Ternati is a nation in the aptly named Spice Islands and is one of only two nations along with Tidori that produce the new trade good Cloves at the start of the game. This is the most powerful trade good prior to the appearance of coal, with a value of 8. Now even though I'm making this guide for Ternati, it will be literally the exact same guide for Tidori. The only reason I picked Ternati is because they have a 4-4-3 ruler, whereas Tidori has a 3-3-3 ruler. That's the only reason. Everything else is the same. Ternati has access to Ternatan missions, which include colonizing the surrounding islands, focusing on trade, religious conversion, and constructions of manufacturing. We have Malakan ideas starting off as production efficiency plus 10, and goods produced plus 10 for their traditions, and sailor maintenance minus 10% for their ambition. And their national ideas focus on trade and colonization. By using this guide you will become a powerful trade and colonial empire and will be able to own all of the Indonesian islands in no time. And you can even form Malaya. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the introduce vision quest decision, set Tidori as a rival, and send one of our free merchants to transfer from the Philippines to the Moluccas. Now we do have another free merchant but we don't have colonial range for any other trade node. We'll move our merchants around later and I will explain that. Next we're gonna summon the diet and pick the best agenda. After that, we're gonna give the clergy religious state clerical advisory council, we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors, and we're gonna give the merchant guilds patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and a private trade fleet. After that, we're gonna sell crown land, so we're left with 0% crown land. And of course later we're gonna get the estate statutory rights event which gives us back crownland in exchange for high autonomy this event isn't bad at all because we're only a one province miner next we're gonna build two more galleys and hire an admiral and we're gonna build two more infantry regiments give our king command and put him in charge of the army we're also gonna hire one advisor it's either gonna be a military or a diplomatic advisor we'll go for a mill advisor first i don't have a discipline or a morale guy so i'm gonna check the diplomatic advisor and see that i have a morale navies guy who i'm going to hire and i'm just gonna hire this manpower guy as a mill advisor we don't need an admin guy yet and we don't even have the money for it and now we're gonna start building a spy network on tidori you could also try to ally someone here, I can't ally anyone off the start, and you don't even really need alliances at this point. Now we're just gonna wait for our ships to be built and for our spy network on Tidori to reach 20. When you get the estate statutory rights event from having 0% crown line, you need to select this option. Ternati also starts off as a plutocracy which means we get plus 1 merchant and plus 5% merchant guilds influence as well as minus 5% nobility influence. You can swap to a mandala system if you want to, but I recommend staying as a plutocracy as we're going to be focusing heavily on trade. Now I just got an event that gave me plus 1 stability and you might get an event too or you might just boost it up manually but when you do, you'll be able to take these two decisions, encourage divination and religious sacrifices, I recommend taking them both. And in about two years, you should have built up your two galleys as well as your two infantry regiments, as well as getting a claim on Tidori, and now we're ready to declare on them. So get your ships into position and declare a conquest against Tidori. They might be allied to one nation, but it's not going to be a problem at all. And now I've occupied their province as well as defeated their navy. But of course I can't peace out yet because they have an ally so I'm going to go naval invade them. So I just defeated their ally and got some war reps from them and now I can full annex Tidori. And I'm going to take their province as well as the max amount of money. Now when you do take this province you will fulfill the mission defeat our rival which requires us to have Tidori not exist. This will trigger the event the spice must flow. Here's what this event does. As you can see here's the spice must flow event and we need to choose one of these six provinces to colonize. So whichever province we pick 200 settlers will arrive there and we'll get 50% local seller increase. And you can pick one of these six provinces. So this one right here, this one right here, or one of the four remaining Spice Island provinces. I recommend colonizing the province of Buru first. 
This is because we will be able to build a spy network on this nation here and continue to further expand. And there we go. As you can see, there are 200 settlers in Buru as well as an increase of 60 per year. We're also going to court to Dori when our war exhaustion dies down a bit and we're going to start building a spy network on this nation right here. As you can see, the province we're colonizing has 500 natives living in it. And since we don't have a colonial policy selected, they can rise up. So I recommend keeping a one or two stack on the province that you're currently colonizing. You should also start building spy networks on the remaining nations here since you technically do border them through this sea tile. Now it's 1451 and the Renaissance has spawned, so it's time to dev it up in our capital. First, we're gonna go and give the merchant guilds tropical city planning, which gives us minus 5% dev cost, as well as local settler increase plus 10%. And we're also gonna turn on the encourage development state edict. I recommend deving production and manpower primarily, but if you do have admin points, you can also dev up tax. Now around this time, you should also be unlocking your second government reform tier, and I recommend going for the enforce trader privileges reform, which will give you plus 5% trade efficiency and plus 30% trade range. And now is also around the time that you should send your free merchant to collect from Malak. And now that some time has passed and I've finished building back up because of this other nation I was fighting along with Tidori did destroy some of my ships, it's time to declare on the weakest of these nations over here. And of course by now you should have built up your spy network. In my case the weakest nation seems to be Bhutan since they don't have any allies and they just finished a war with Makassar so they should be pretty weakened right now so I'm gonna be declaring on Bhutan. In your case some other nation might be the weakest, it doesn't matter, whichever one is the weakest that's the nation you're gonna declare on. And now that I've fully occupied this nation, I'm going to be taking all their money and full annexing them. We're not going to be concentrating development just yet because we don't have all the provinces in this area. So once I take over Lu, then I'll concentrate development. Now a few months have passed, as you can see my corn Bhutan is not even finished, but I can see that the nation of Bone is only allied to Makassar. So Makassar has two alliances with Banjar and Bone. Lui has one alliance with Banjar, but Banjar is a stronger nation. And Bone is allied only to Makassar. So Bone would be the next best nation to attack. And Makassar is also one level lower in Miltek than I am. So we're going to be declaring on the nation of Bone. In your case, some other nation might be weaker, but either way, you're going to be conquering these nations over here but first I am going to be taking one loan and hiring the free company because I will be fighting two slightly stronger nations than my two previous wars so far so once this company is done recruiting I will be declaring and I'm gonna be focusing on their ally first so we can just white piece them and now that I've fully occupied their ally, I'm gonna make them annul their alliances. So we're gonna have an easier time fighting them later. Just that, we want as short a truce as possible. And now I've fully occupied this nation, so I'm going to be full annexing them and taking all their ducats. Once again, I'm not gonna be concentrating development yet because I don't have all the provinces in the area. And I'm just gonna be coring them, but first I'm gonna reduce war exhaustion. Now, only a few months have passed and the nation of Luwu has full annexed this nation right here because of course I made them annul all their alliance. Now, Luwu is allied to Bonjar, but as I can see, Bonjar is in a war with Brunei. So, they won't join the call to arms if I declare on Luwu. You might find yourself in a situation like this in your playthrough. Either way, you're gonna be declaring once again on the next weakest nation that is on the island of Sulawesi. In my case, it's Luwu. In your case, it might be someone else. So I still have the free company right here and I'm going to be immediately declaring. So now I've fully occupied them and I am going to full annex them and take all their ducats. And now is the time where I will concentrate development in this area as well as this area. And I will be coring these provinces. 
And once you do have provinces that border the Java Sea sea tile, you should start building a spy network on whatever nation holds these provinces, as well as these provinces over here. In my case, it's Banjar and Majapahit. By this time, you should also have spawned the Renaissance in your capital of Ternate and be able to embrace it. And for your first idea group, I recommend picking expansion ideas as the colonists will help you colonize all of these islands faster than just through events and all the trade bonuses mesh really well with your national ideas. So I'm gonna go with expansion. For your third government reform, I recommend picking centralized bureaucracy. And you should also switch your focus to administrative power since we are doing an administrative idea group. And now is around the time you want to hire an admin advisor if you have the money for it. Honestly, you should be making a decent amount of money by now for a nation of your size due to the cloves trade good, which is already present in three of your provinces. Don't forget to also curry favors with your allies in order to get some benefits from them. Once you do get your first colonist from expansion ideas, I recommend taking the native coexistence policy with a native uprising chance of minus 100%. This is because a lot of the uncolonized provinces here have a really high number of natives, so we don't want to be putting 10 stacks on them to prevent revolts. Now the first province I recommend colonizing with your colonist is province of Benkulu right here on Sumatra. This will open up another expansion route for you, so we're going to be sending colonists right here. Don't colonize the spice islands with your colonists because we're going to be colonizing them from events anyway. And now that I have spy networks built up on some of these nations here that I border through the Java Sea sea tile, we're going to be declaring on the weakest of them, which in my case is the nation of Banjar. They are only allied to Lombagon, so I'm going to be declaring on them. And once a colonist arrives in the province of Benkulu, we're gonna start building a spy network on the nations that border this province. In my case, it's Palembang and Indrapura. And this is also around the time where your first event colony becomes self-sustaining. The next mission which you unlock will give you the Spice Must Flow event again. And you will need to pick between this, 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 or this province. Once again, I recommend picking one of the Spice Island provinces so you can get even more cloves. And the next one you should do is the province of Saram. Now you should also have some money accumulated and I recommend building your first building, which will be a marketplace, either in your capital because it will have a very high number of trade power due to you devving it up or in the province of Makassar. I'm gonna be building one first in my capital and then in this province. And now that I have 100%ed this nation of Banjar, I will in fact be vassalizing them and taking all their money instead of full annexing them. This is because right now we're focusing on an admin idea group, so we need the admin points. And they have a core here which we can use to reconquest. Now in your case it might be different and you might be fighting a stronger or weaker nation. If there are on 4 to 5 provinces, you can vassalize. If they're bigger than that, you should take some of their provinces. They are going to be disloyal, but we are going to improve relations or placate them once or twice to get them loyal. By this time, one of your spy networks on the nations over here should have finished. In my case, I got a claim on Indrapura. In your case, it might be some other country. Either way, we're going to be declaring on the weaker of the nations that you are bordering. So in my case, Palembang is kind of strong. So I'm going to be declaring on Indrapura. They're only allied with Palembang. So you're going to want to ferry all your troops over here and prepare to declare war on the weaker nation. And now you should be able to be big enough to ally some stronger nation. And I recommend allying a nation over on Sumatra. I'm going to ally the strongest nation, which seems to be Sayak. Once we're done taking over all the other smaller nations, of course, we are going to be breaking the alliance with whichever nation we allied. And now it's time to declare on the nation of Indrapura. They did get an ally in the meantime, the nation of Sambas, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. When you get your fourth merchant from the expansion idea group, I recommend sending him to transfer trade power from Canton to the Philippines. Now I fully occupied their ally of Palembang and in the peace deal, I am going to be pillaging their capital as well as taking all their money and war reps. And I am just going to be white piecing their other ally for the sake of saving time. And I'm just going to be full annexing them. Now in your case you might also be fighting the nation of Indrapura or you might be fighting Palembang depending on who's weaker. And I'm going to be taking all their buckets. 
After this you should have a solid foothold in Sumatra and you're gonna keep building spy networks on every nation that you border and fighting them in the order of who is the weakest. I recommend picking meritocratic recruitment. Now I can see that Majapahi is in a war against Brunei and that their ally Brau won't join so this is a perfect time to declare on them. Now in your case it might be different, you might be declaring on a nation over here or another weak nation that's over here or over here. Now that I have full siege Majapahit and their ally Bali, I am actually going to be taking Bali in this war. This is due to the fact that Bali has the Pura Besaki monument. At level 3 it gives you minus 1 national rest and minus 15% stab cost. This is a pretty decent modifier, especially to help with the rebels, so I want to get it as soon as possible. Another monument that Majapahit might have in your game, in my case Sunda has it right now, is the Prambanan temple, which at level 3 gives you minus 15% development cost, plus 1 missionary, and plus 2% missionary strength. Now this is excellent if you're playing as Ternati, especially for the missionary strength since you are animist and you do need to convert a lot of provinces later on. So you definitely should be going for these two monuments right here as soon as you can. So in this peace deal I'm gonna take Bali as well as these two provinces from Majapahit and all their money. For your fifth government reform, which you should be getting by now, I recommend taking the general estates reform, which gives you plus 10% production efficiency. This is a very nice modifier to have, especially for a trade focused game like we're doing right now. Around this time you should also be getting your first age ability and I recommend taking the high developed colonies ability which gives you plus one tax production and manpower in all your finished colonies. And after this point, it's just more of the same, attacking the weakest nations since you've spread around on all the Indonesian islands such as Java, Sulawesi, Borneo through your vassals, Sumatra, and maybe even the Philippines, I haven't gotten there yet, and it's just attacking the weakest nations and focusing on conquering nations around 75% of the time and vassalizing them, the rest 25%. As soon as your event colonies finish and you get the Spice Must Flow achievement again and again, I recommend colonizing the rest of the provinces that can spawn the cloves trade good through the events. Well, as with your two regular colonists, you should focus the first one on expanding in the rest of the Indonesian islands, whereas with the second one you should start building colonies in Australia and possibly even North America. Of course later on when you conquer enough land you can form the nation of Malaya and I actually do recommend doing so as Malaya is a very strong nation and possibly an even richer nation than Ternati with even more trade focused national ideas. For your sixth government reform I recommend taking l'état de Semois and for your seventh one I recommend taking political absolutism. Of course when you unlock the final mission Ternatan Dominance which gives you the Spice Must Flow event again you also get a third colonist which you would have in addition to the two that you already have from expansion ideas and by that time you will have colonized more of the Indonesian islands so you can colonize wherever you can even go to Africa, South America or North America. You should also focus on upgrading the Pura Besaki monument to level 3 to get the best modifiers as well as the Prambanan temple and later on Angkor Wat which gives you minus 15% technology cost, as well as the Grand Palace of Bangkok which has some really really strong modifiers, as well as this monument here in Pegu which gives you minus 25% advisor costs, as well as Diplo Rep and Diplo Relations. So by this point of the game you will be present in all the islands and you will focus on conquering the weakest nations until you become the strongest nation yourself and you can move into continental Southeast Asia. For your second idea group I recommend taking quality ideas as it will help you increase your army quality but your navy quality as well since you will be heavily focusing on your navy. For your third idea group I recommend taking trade ideas as it will mesh very well with your national ideas and for your fourth idea group you should pick offensive or quantity ideas. After that it's your choice. By this time if you played like me you might have around 50 to 60 development in your capital from concentrating development and pillaging capitals which of course is very strong. As you can see I'm getting two ducats just from this one province alone from cloves and and if you dubbed up the renaissance you should be the leading nation in technology in southeast asia as well as probably the only nation that has the renaissance and that's pretty much where this guide will stop because it's more of the same conquering smaller nations and such and my game will diverge too much from yours for me to be able to make an accurate guide past this point let me know in the comments what other nation you would like to see a guide on and if you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like and subscribing only 10 percent of your subscribe so it really mean a lot and i've also launched channel memberships so if you really want to support the channel 
with more than just subscribing you can check out the join button down below and you can join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video